organic farming can be run efficiently and successfully by getting the basic elements right. Some crucial factors such as seeds, lights, water and the process of planting need to be identified and implemented correctly. Choosing the right type of seeds that are of the highest quality is the most important. So, uh, good quality seeds are uh, necessary for hydroponics and for any sort of cultivation. So, uh, we recommend to get your seeds locally and from a trusted vendor. Or if you don't have that facility in your place, then you can go in for certain online sites where you can get uh, the seeds. Uh, seed companies like Rizwan is a very good company. We use that for all our commercial operations. They are a little expensive, but they give you like 100% germination results. And then we've got uh, Ashoka seeds, we've got uh, Namdari seeds. So every state or every city has its local uh, distribution point and you should try to get your seeds locally. So, or you can source them from a trusted vendor online. There are a widely variety of seeds and seed retailers to choose from. Selecting the right type of plants to grow and establishing a proper system required for them to thrive is crucial to yield the expected results. Unlike traditional farming which uses soil, hydrophonic farming method uses other mediums known as substrates to grow plants. Substrates of various types are available in the market. The ideal substrate must be selected based on the type of plants and the hydrophonic system. So once the seeds are procured based on the kind of seed, for example if it was a spinach seed, then we would soak it in uh, warm water for say 12 hours before uh, planting them or if they were just basil seeds, we would you know, transplant them directly. So here of course we do not use any soil again. So what we do is we use uh, cocoa peat as a medium or perlite as a medium or vermiculite or people use rock wool. We've got oasis cubes which is a biodegradable sponge. So basically we use uh, any sort of inert medium to grow our plants and uh, maintain it in the nursery for two weeks or three weeks depending on the kind of plant before we transplant it into the main system. The seeding part, uh, the nursery part is very similar to uh, what is cultivated on an, for an outside cultivation. Just that the medium uh, here in hydroponics is an inert medium and in soil we are using say compost and garden soil for starting your seedlings. So in the seedling stage uh, it is necessary to provide them uh, low DLI light like somewhere around 5 to 6 DLI for a proper germination. So you can either use a indoor system with LED lights to do your germination or you can put it in the morning sunlight in the east side for say 2 to 3 hours in the morning to harden off initially and then transplant it into the system and if it's a full sun plant then you're uh, growing it uh, you know without any shade or if it's a half sun uh, you know semi shade plant then you're using a shade net to grow the plants so uh, this is the general process of growing hydroponic plants. Lights play a vital role in the process of hydroponic farming. Artificial lighting is used to fulfill the direct and indirect sunlight requirements. Depending on the type of plants and system size, the ideal light suitable for producing effective results must be selected. Hydrophonic farming can be established in homes for both self-consumption and commercial purposes. It's a viable business option with a higher return of investment. Uh, for an indoor system, we use LED lights uh, for providing uh, the supplement light and the artificial light instead of sunlight. And uh, for example, like if you're going to go for a 18 watt uh, regular LED Philips light, then it is going to cost you around 250 to 300 rupees and so on and so forth. So example, if you're purchasing a 36 watt light, it might cost you somewhere around 500 rupees. So you might have to use around uh, say 8 to 9 uh, 36 watt uh, LED tube lights for a 240 planter system. So uh, usually the basil varieties in India has a lot of demand things like Italian basil and Thai basil and purple basil and if somebody was growing them in their house uh, for their self-consumption or even for uh, commercial use then it would be a very viable option because it is always in demand and it's a very high return on investment plant. We also do a buyback of basil at 250 rupees a kg so uh, it is a very high yielding crop and a high value crop so it is a commercial crop and can be used and to grow in small spaces and to you know get a good return on investment.